Hello everyone, this is Joseph and Crystal. We're going to make two recipes for you tonight. We're going to use this intro on both videos because I'm lazy like that. <laughs> we are going to make tiramisu, which is an Italian dessert. And it is delicious. It's not that hard to make and you make it the night before. We're also going to make a Philippine recipe, which is called lechon kawali, which is basically, it's made from the same cut you make bacon out of, which pork belly yep it's made from the pork belly just like what you make um it's like liempo okay liempo in the philippines it's liempo in the philippines crystal currently has me on a low carb diet trying to help me lose some weight um which we're doing fairly well at and this is one of the recipes that we're doing that has low carbs i know some of you are going to probably talk about it being deep fried and how that's probably not good for me or the salt that's in the rub we use um, you can't have low sodium, you can't have low carbs and low sugars, you gotta have something. So, um, we're gonna get started. So, but tiramisu is not low carb, just no. so you know. Nope, guys. tiramisu is not. That's a request from a friend of ours that we're gonna eat dinner with tomorrow, and he requested tiramisu. And uh, since I like making desserts, I couldn't pass up the opportunity. We also finally found some lady fingers locally. To where I was able to get two packages of it. So now's a great time to make some tiramisu. So we're going to stop this one and put it to both videos and we will walk you through the process. We are making both of these simultaneously. So it should be fun. All right. Yeah. Look forward to you guys joining us. All right. Bye. All right, everybody. We are back. I've got the ingredients spread out right here in front of us. To the right, you've got I've got Hershey's dark cocoa. Um, I I prefer the dark cocoa over the regular cocoa powder. I have six eggs separated into yolks and whites. That's specific. We'll need that in a minute. We have ten tablespoons of white granulated sugar split in half because half is going to go into the egg mixture, half is going to go into the egg whites when we whip them up. We have a package of lady fingers. We were able to uh, request these at a grocery store close to us. Over here we have two cups of espresso that we have already chilled. And we have Camora here. This is a coffee liqueur. It is 20% alcohol by volume. This is a generic version of um, Kahlua. So it's just any coffee liqueur. Traditionally, this was made with either a rum or a specific kind of wine that I don't know the name of it. And then most importantly, we've got the screwdriver. I uh, forgot the mascarpone. Oh, you're right. See, the screwdriver is already working. So Walmart, you can actually request this at Walmart. They carry it mascarpone. You have to go up to the dairy section where they do the sliced meats and the fried chicken but you can get mascarpone cheese at walmart it is a little bit pricey there are substitutes out there online but because this was the only expensive ingredient out of it all we went ahead and splurged for it you need two cups of it so you need 16 ounces so two of those containers so we will bring you back once we start combining it for the boss for now all right so we're going to, the first step we're going to do is in our stand mixer, we're going to add in our six egg white or egg yolks. Go ahead. All right, so the first step we're going to do is we are going to add in the egg yolks, the six egg yolks. Then we are going, as she's trying to get it all out of there. Then we're going to add to it our sugar as it slowly starts mixing. Alright, I'll call it, bring you back when it's done. Alright, sorry for the noise. I know it's a stand mixer. I just wanted you guys to see this is... There you go. So if you notice, this is still the egg yolks and half of the sugar. We have beat it for a couple, 
couple minutes until it has started getting fluffy and white. And that's what you want to go to. So one of the things Crystal and I was discussing is there are two schools of thought when it comes to making tiramisu. The first one is some people use a double boiler and cook the egg yolks. Since this does have raw egg in it, we are going with the uncooked version, which we're fine with. And this, we're just straight using the egg yolks. We're not going to do the double boiler step. So if you have, don't like eating raw eggs, that is an extra step that you take from here is you would do is the double boiler and cook it and fold in your sugar at that point. That's not the route we're taking. But we will still continue doing this, right? That's correct. Okay, so next we're going to do the mascarpone cheese. She's going to scrape both of the containers into the bowl. Just like this? Yep, that's fine. This is 32. This is eight ounces. Oh, okay. Of so basically, this one container is one eight. cup. Eight. Eight ounces. Okay. So we're going to put both of them in there, and we're going to slowly mix them in, and then we're going to put it back on high speed again. This is the first time I'm working, me or Crystal's working with mascarpone cheese, and it's very interesting, the consistency of it. Yeah. It's got a very interesting consistency. All right. Okay. So, go ahead and turn it on two. two. Yep, go ahead. Good job. All right, so what she's doing is, you see how the, the egg mixture down there is really thick and fluffy, and that's exactly how what we want. Two? All right, we'll come back at the next step. All right, so our mixture is done. That's the sugar, egg yolks, and mascarpone cheese. We had to set it aside because I've only got one mixer. We are now going to do the six egg whites into the mixer. We are going to basically mix them and add and make homemade whipping cream. I guess it wouldn't be whipping cream. It'd be stiff peaks is what we're going to make. So some people will probably lecture me and say, oh, you should have just slowly incorporated the sugar. I've never really seen any big difference on it. So, all right, we'll bring it back when this is done. And what Crystal is doing right now is Crystal is doing what's called a scrape down, which is whenever you're first starting stuff, you want to scrape off the side of the bowls to make sure everything gets mixed in evenly. All right, we'll bring you back. All right. As you can see, we've made homemade Cool Whip, whatever you want to call it. I'm just shy of stiff peaks, which I'm fine with. It's enough that you can still see where the um, mixer has went in. So these are what I, I call soft peaks. So what we are going to do now is we are going to get the big bowl baby we are going to fold our mascarpone our cool whip into the mascarpone cheese and we'll bring you back in a minute okay so we've got our So at this stage, you want to be careful not to overwork your egg whites, and you're basically going to fold it in. And what you're going to do is you're going to go, you're going to go down in the middle, and you're going to scoop out and up, and you're going to come in. Nope. You're going to go down into the middle, and you're kind of just rotating it. You want to drag the uh -huh. Cool Whip down into the middle of the mascarpone cheese. It's called folding. Oh, okay. You want to try to do your best not like to. Like this. 
Sure. That's fine. <laughs> I'm not sure, maybe. That's fine. All right, so what you're going to do is you want to kind of chop it in the middle. So take it, and there you go. Now go to one of the sides. Uh, so you want to drag that Cool Whip down into the middle and fold it in. You don't want to, yep. You don't want to overwork it. You don't want to deep take the air. Why? All that air that we just fluffed into those egg whites, you want to make sure that you try to keep that volume. It's going uh, to give you the light fluffiness of the the texture for the filling. All right, folks, you guys heard the explanation. You guys know how to do this. So we will bring you right back once we get this incorporated. All right, so we're back. This is the final stage of it. You can still see it's fluffy. What Crystal's doing here is she's just going to do a very light layer. A um, little more than that. This just keeps it from, gives a little bit of flavoring at the bottom. So we're not putting the lady fingers directly on the bottom. This is Crystal and I's first time doing tiramisu. I've watched it being done several times. I've helped a friend do it, but I've never made it by myself. Is this, is this good? That's fine. So next we're going to take our lady fingers. We're going to soak them in the coffee and then we're going to start planting them. We're going to do a few off of camera first and we're going to start lay layering them in. So we'll be right back. All right, so basically we're at only two to three seconds. You're going to put it on both sides of the lady finger. You don't want to over soak it, but I don't mind that. Um, if you have dentures or don't have teeth, this is a great recipe for you because if you over soak it, it will get soft and you can eat it. Um, I know a few senior citizens that have issues with hard things they're in my family i love them but they have to be conscious of if it's hard enough so we're going to do two layers of this it looks like it's going to take one full pack just to do the bottom. And no, I'm not going stingy on the Espresso Kahlua mix because for me personally, this is the best part. Why else would you have tiramisu if you didn't want a decent coffee flavor? All right, guys, so here is, guys and girls, this is the first layer done. Um, if you notice, these are going to be soft to the touch. As they sit, they get softer, and it's really delicious. Tiramisu is one of those recipes that you want to make at least. You're going to see a lot of people that say, oh, let it so sit in the fridge for at least eight hours. No, I'm more along the lines of saying let it so sit in the fridge for at least a day. If you can do it early enough, do it two days. Mask uh, tiramisu is one of those recipes that it gets better the longer that it sits in the refrigerator. Yeah. It gets delicious. So there is a local pizza store here in uh, Georgia called Pepino's that they pre-order their uh, tiramisu. And it sits in their cooler until it gets sold. And it's, it's delicious. delicious. Yeah, it, it the longer it sits in there, you can start seeing that it does um, start to age because of the dairy and the eggs in it. But it's so worth it. So this is something that some Put pastry. More. This is what some pastry chefs will call see, seeing the bones. You can just see the outlines of the lady fingers. You don't want to go heavy on this middle. Why? You don't want to go heavy on this middle layer because you want to make sure you get enough room to put your top layer on. Uh, and then you put the remainder of your uh, mixture on the top. It's the icing of it all. You don't want to take up too much space on your bottom layer or your middle layer 
and not be able to put in the rest of your lady fingers. Got it. So as you see here, we've used almost that first uh, batch of espresso. And the and, first batch. Yep, and the whole first pack. This is all we've got left of this packet. We have a second packet. So we are going to finish this up. Whatever we have left out of the second pack, we are going to just use for our coffees in the morning. And we're going to make up some more of this in Kahlua. Okay. So we'll be right back. All right. So one of the things Crystal pointed out to me that I forgot to show you guys is I do the cocoa powder in the middle. Just put a little bit of cocoa powder in it and I just dust it. What's nice is because since I use the dark chocolate and not just straight cocoa powder, it actually makes a really nice layer in the middle of your two layers. And it gives it that color definition as well as in the taste difference. So we have our new mixture of coffee and clue over here. It's, it's still a bit warm to the touch, um, but we're going to go ahead and get started on doing this next layer. So we're going to finish this layer out. We'll bring you back at the end when we start finishing it up and wrapping it together. Right back. All right, so if you guys notice, we had four shots of espresso over here from our espresso maker. And just in one layer, we pretty much used it. So we used a total of eight shots of espresso with uh, two full shots of clue in each batch. So there's a lot of espresso and a lot of clue in this batch. So I'm really excited to taste it. I know myself and my friend that we're going to see is very much a coffee type people. So it is going to be delicious. The longer it sets, the more it gets in there and starts working into everything. Yeah, it started being the... It's different than the first time, right? Good. All right, so if you guys notice, it started getting a little bit um, runny on us. That's not a big deal. Um, it's going to allow it to get into these layers a little mm -hmm. bit better. And also, you're going to put this in the refrigerator for up to a day. Yeah. So it's going to re-solidify. So it's and, still good. Oh, yeah. It's still going to be massively delicious. So... It's not perfect. I don't claim to be a professional baker. I don't claim to be a, any kind of baker. I'm a fat man that enjoys his food. So if you go buy tiramisu, I don't care where you buy it, it's going to be expensive. And this is going to be a lot less. Crystal, it's okay. Making it is cheaper than going and buying it because you'll be buying it by the slice and it gets expensive quick. Yeah, it's like $6 per slice. And it's not always the freshest. While, mm -hmm. yes, it gets good with age, sometimes I'd much rather know what's in it. I want to control the alcohol quantity, the alcohol quality that's in my tiramisu. Um, because a lot of the times if you get them at a grocery store, or a restaurant, they're not going to have alcohol in it because they want to sell it to the kids. They want to sell it to as many people as they can. So it's alcohol free. So this is just a cheap uh, strainer that comes in a set at Walmart. I just use this for whenever I dust things, powdered sugar, my brown, my cocoa and stuff like that. We're going to wipe the edges off put shrink wrap over this. We're going to stick it in the fridge for a day and then we're going to enjoy it later. Um, we had a, we had someone request that we show a display of it. If we remember at the party tomorrow, we're going to do a cut and display for you guys and we'll add that into the video. So let me know if you guys have any questions. We're going to include the recipe below and use this video as a guide. We're not going to do step-by-step -step instructions. So feel free to leave us a comment. Let us know if you try it. Like, subscribe. If we get a lot of thumbs up and on the videos or comments, we're going to continue making recipes for you guys. All right, we now have our 
um, Lechon Kuali. So you can see the other video for that. We're going to go ahead and go in and go finish that up. Mm -hmm. All right. Enjoy, guys. All right. So we are back. It has been 24 hours. We're over at a friend's house, and we are about to try it. So if you see, you can see the lady fingers down in the actual thing itself. So it turned out really good. So my friend Wes is going to try it. So let us know what you think, Wes. Mm. Yeah, can you taste the coffee, the espresso in it? Very good. Yeah? Mm -hmm. All right, so it's thumb up for Wes. All right, guys, I hope you like it. Like we said earlier, do a like and subscribe, and uh, let us know what you think of this recipe. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers.